Yeah, one of the things that I find most valuable about men's groups is that there's a chance to recognize what is immediately present. Like, if I'm fair, then oh, if I'm afraid, then okay, I'm afraid, and that's the truth of that moment. And it's possible to be open about the truth of the moment without having it define my whole life. It doesn't mean I'm always like that, but I can kind of explore every facet of myself that maybe doesn't get that much space in everyday life. Could be anger, could be fear, could be um, insecurity. It could also be um, maybe even even self-acknowledging, like self-acknowledgement can also be taboo. There can be taboo in either direction. And, and I think to explore the full range of being human and being a man is one of the, the gifts that a, a men's group offers. And it's not about trying to pretend or perform anything. It's about um, getting more and more in touch with what is actually happening in each moment and finding that that can be a, a gateway to deeper connection with oneself and others. That rather than seeing it as an obstacle, once it is explored, it's actually a gateway to what we want. That's my experience. Can we think of a good metaphor, like a laboratorium or something? Yeah, it's... Um, I guess it's both uh, a laboratorium and real life. You know, this is not only uh, a laboratorium, it's also real people and real connections, real things going on uh, in that moment. So it's not like some people say, oh, you know, for some people they, they behave in a certain way in the men's group and then there's a danger that their life as a whole is very different from that. But, but I think even even um, a men's group is still real life. It's just uh, um, Any any example where this really worked well for you? Um, I was in Bali, um, and I had uh, going through some complexities with a woman, mm -hmm. and and I I got to know that oh there's a men's group there, and I go there, and I never met most of these people before, but. But immediately I feel safe enough to, to just, you know, explore it, express my anger, express whatever was going on for me. And, and, um, and then through that expression, finding uh, uh, both feeling a relief, but also having more clarity and, and getting very useful feedback. And, and, and um, yeah, that was very... But then what is it that a men's group offers that normal friends can't? Mm. there's a bigger emphasis on listening skills and, and, and being there for each other and letting each person have their opportunity to, sh to share without being interrupted, without being given advice or without being trying to be, get fixed or anything. It's, it's an opportunity to be um, expressed, self-expressed and, and become visible more than what the usual friendships would give space for because there is no language for it, there is no training for, for that kind of interaction but a men's group um, provides a certain platform through which a deeper um, self-expression becomes possible. Now, I've seen you at work in, in men's groups, and indeed, expression is, is a big thing for you. Yeah. What do you get from that? Expression gives rise to clarity. So it's not always, I think, after something is being expressed, then it can change, it can transform. But if, if I keep it inside myself and don't uh, tell anyone, then it can get stuck. And, and it can become a problem. But once I express it, then suddenly it changes. So I, I think um, with expression, it's not about expression in itself having to be very meaningful or it be in a certain way. It's more about the, the, the process itself of expressing whatever is there will give it an opportunity to change and move. And yeah. 
yeah so definitely taking away shame is would be one of the biggest benefits of a men's group that there is an opportunity to express and expose whatever is there the things that we might be afraid of uh, think that we are alone in having certain like certain emotions for example and then by exposing it then the shame gets less and less and it doesn't mean that there's a goal of eliminating shame but but uh, it will there will not be the same charge around it so even if the shame comes up it's um, it doesn't we don't have to get stuck in it because like, if I have expressed certain shameful aspects of myself many times and each time it's met with there's actually an increased sense of connection and uh, there is respect there is uh, appreciation there is maybe a sense of playfulness then when I have many of those experiences then it's very hard for me to take the shame that seriously for me um, being around men can be challenging because because I was uh, bullied growing up in school and so on and so I didn't feel included and feel like I was one of the guys uh, but but then I, I also now realize that that's probably a fairly common experience you know e in different ways I think even the those cool boys those those cool guys also may not necessarily had an easy time and so I think that sense of being disconnected or being different or being not accepted I think it's much more common than most of us think at least that's my experience in the men's groups that whatever I bring to the table I'm always surprised that wow this is actually not such a big deal I, oh I, they're actually like people having much well bigger stuff than me uh, even like like <laughs> I, might, I might think like oh I'm the most miserable person in the world <laughs> and then I see wow they all have their misery too so then what's the fucking problem like if we all have it why don't we just be open about it and then laugh about it and and move on that's actually possible that 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 has been possible for me through the men's groups uh, but it's really scary it can be really scary in the beginning like uh, I, I might think almost I'm gonna die and go if I share this I'm gonna be so shameful or I'm gonna be judged um, so it's it takes some some balls it does take some courage um, and uh, in some way some people might see men's groups as kind of like oh it's about being soft or feminine and talking about emotions but I would say that that the the fierceness uh, with which uh, it is possible to break through one's own prison and and say like this is what's actually happening for me and I'm fed up with my own self-sabotage and now I'm gonna share what's happening in order for it to change and that's the fierceness and that's not um, like being being weak or soft it, I mean it can involve softness and there's nothing wrong with softness but it's it takes courage and 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 I, I think that's the people who may who may judge a men's groups not really knowing what it is I think they themselves they don't necessarily have that courage so they are afraid to do that and therefore they judge men's groups as like always oh, for like weak soft guys or something something like that now those memories from from being bullied in school is the men's group also kind of a new attempt to um, start understanding the the dominance hierarchy from the past and start forgiving maybe the guys that that bullied or because we now see that they probably were just as human as as we are and 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 so being in the men's group helps with with not being afraid of them anymore um i think uh forgiveness uh is a, a christian way of being a kind person but as a, as a as, as a strategy you know oh i'm gonna forgive that's a strategy and i but but f let's say the real forgiveness happens when there is uh some way uh re the connect a connection is reestablished. you know even if i'm not connecting with those people i can kind of include them in my heart i can i can feel that wow i can see their suffering too and i can i can you know see say admirable qualities in them as well like like when, when 
when I can express myself so I can let go of that, like let's say take off a lot of steam of my own woundedness, then I can see other people with much more clarity and see, appreciate uh, um, them in a much more uh, whole way. I can see every aspect of the person. And so def I guess some kind of forgiveness might be the result, but it's not, but first there has to be an expression of whatever is there, which is usually uh, not forgiveness. It might be anger, it might be deep woundedness, rage, and and that's expressing that is the way to to forgiveness. But it's um, it's more a byproduct of emptying myself or whatever is is stuck inside. You you focused on the forgiveness, mm -hmm. and and I I did bring that up. The where my mind was going was was something else. That all right. So in in the past we probably felt inadequate compared to other boys at school and there were probably some very mean boys there as well. And so perhaps understanding people better now through a men's group, because we now see that everyone has insecurities. Hmm. And so thereby nullifying the 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 thoughts that may have been there for a very long time that that we don't matter yeah yeah it's definitely very powerful to see that everybody has to struggle like even maybe even more so the people that it looks like everything is going well maybe even sometimes they are the people who struggle the most is what I, what i sometimes see uh, because just because and actually the people that are maybe more capable of expressing what's actually going on might, it may, it may look a bit maybe sc scary from the outside, you know, if, if oneself doesn't have the same ability. It might look, it, like, oh, this person is really struggling, but, but actually once things are being expressed, it's not such, such a big struggle anymore. So, but, um, yeah, I would definitely say say that seeing a lot of different men and all having their struggles, and then it definitely uh, puts my own struggles into perspective, and it also makes it harder to paint caricatures of other other men, also from my past. And you know, I I can understand they have to had stuff going on, and and uh, yeah, because sometimes some men in in a group might resemble certain traits, you know, or the people that bully me, for example, and then I. I can see their pain and I can um, have a great, greater understanding of where that probably was coming from. Yeah. You have a mentor. Yeah. Have conversations with him helped in understanding your own shame better? Yeah, a lot. Um, part of it has been not necessarily working with the shame, but but for him, like when he validates my qualities, my my intelligence, my uh, uniqueness, then that is uh, that is probably more important than working with the shame as such. You know, if it comes up and it becomes an uh, an obstacle, it might need to be addressed. But but the shame is there often because there was a lack of validation. So when, when he, as an older man that I respect and admire and want to, to learn from, when he validates my intelligence, my uniqueness then, which I didn't get to the extent that it was needed growing up, then that's very, a very important way of dealing with shame. What are the strengths, the strengths of your mentor? Uh, deep uh, ability to listen. Um, and an ability to deal with the very powerful stuff. It's like there is there's not really any taboo. Everything is welcome. Everything is okay. And and there is there is not this uh, there's an understanding that that it, there is some kind of in intelligence behind it. even something that looks very distorted. There's some intelligence behind it. So by going into it, the intelligence can can come forth much more. 
Um, yeah. But, but and I'm not being afraid to ask difficult questions or to challenge or, you know, kind of want. Yeah, I, I feel very safe, you know, when there is this. Um, when there is no energy used for hiding or for trying to avoid something, there is so much energy that can be used for getting straight to the matter and dealing with it. And, and uh, yeah. In the men's groups that we have been in together, do you recall any instances wherein one of the other men kind of had this this mental role? Mentor? Mental role. Um, not so much. Um, I remember one man was sometimes, he, he was encouraging, very encouraging of expression. And, and, and that, uh, yeah, that, that might have something to do with the mental role, but not so much. So how would you typify the men's groups that we've been in then? Um, I think it's more like we are all peers in a way. It's not so much like one person being the leader, one person uh, being a, a facilitator even, you know, it's more being peers, you know, equals. That's, that's more the nature of those specific groups. But there are also other, there can be other groups where there is more a stronger sense of leadership, like some people who are definitely leaders, not maybe not even participating, but facilitating the process. And so that's more where I see the mentor role coming in. Last night we watched an interview with um, someone who has quite a history in Finkover's men's groups and very knowledgeable, insightful man. How would it be to have someone like that in a men's group? I think that's, that definitely can be great. It's a different, it can become a different group, different kind of group because uh, that all older knowledgeable man uh, might be then uh, kind of the directing force of the group. I believe that uh, in a men's group, then the foundation should be honoring the authenticity of each participant. Uh, when there is one or two people being the leaders, there is a danger that rather than supporting the authenticity within each individual to come forth, that they are promoting a certain external form, you know, this is what authenticity looks like, this is how we should behave, this is how we should do, then it's, it becomes more of an ideology rather than something fresh in the moment. So I believe that the, um, the most efficient leadership in a men's group would be if the leaders have an understanding of the dynamics or authenticity that applies to everyone regardless of the differences, you know, so that they're so there's not really a focus on the form, but it, there is an understanding of the guiding principles which allows each individual's authenticity to come forth. And, uh, and that, that takes courage. That takes to be willing to always be in a certain chaos. Uh, and then, um, but then knowing that that chaos can be very alive and very fruitful, there can be so much happening but there has to be some acceptance of, of chaos. Um, yeah. It, it can be inspiring to see authenticity in anyone. Um, and I, I guess anyone who is authentic, or in that moment, they are kind of take in charge of their own life, you know, not necessarily in control, but they are honoring themselves, taking themselves seriously. And I think that quality will always be inspiring. That uh, there is something that's, that goes beyond the differences. That there may be a lot of differences between me and someone else, but if they can be really authentic, then that uh, also comes with a certain vulnerability. And in that vulnerability, there is a possibility to connect. And, and if they kind of take, like whenever someone takes the first step to be vulnerable and authentic and self-revealing, it's a bit harder to, to attack. It's, it is an invitation to, to do the same in return. 
Yeah, I, I like that you bring up connect connection. Mm. As that is is so noticeable in a men's group that guys that you may feel nothing in common with at first mm. in the group, however, you're recognizing that we are we are really connecting here. Yeah. And and the connecting is doesn't mean necessarily agreeing. It can even be like being taking very opposite points of view but but then but then feeling a sense of liberation that hey we are not playing games with each other here and so connecting and connection is you know it's not an external form it's something alive and fresh experienced in the moment and it's usually the, the easiest way to create connection is to be authentic and to let differences be expressed that's that's okay we know they are there anyway so why pretend There is often a, a limited understanding of what love and care means. And, and I think that, uh, unfortunately, some of the gifts that men can bring, which is often a bit different from what women bring, has not been valued enough. That uh, to challenge someone else or challenge oneself or, or to kind of go into something that is difficult with fierceness and, and commitment, like, let's figure this out that can be an act of love and care and, and but there's often a lot of fear of this intensity and um but i think that's that's very sad because it's it's a misunderstanding and uh, and because it's um, misunderstood there is a lot of confusion around uh, the, the potential kind of cutting through ability that perhaps is a bit stronger in men than in women and and that that confusion can also lead to that it cannot really be used appropriately and effecti effectively in the world. But the men's groups can be a training ground to use this ability to cut through the bullshit in oneself, in relationships, in work, and so on. And and that's an aspect of love and care, as I see it. Because it, it also takes a lot of commitment. It's not. It's it's a vulnerable thing to come forth in that. It's like. Sh I, I, if I don't care, why would I even bother? It's really, I have to care in, in order to, to cut through. Any memories that come up wherein such a thing worked really well in one of the meetings? Um, I can, I can uh, uh, there's one memory that was not from, from Canada, but there was a, uh, at the end of the men's group, I, I shared something. Um, that was coming from my defensiveness. And then one man said, incongruency. Like he, he pointed out that, you know, this, what you're saying now, that this doesn't seem authentic, you know, this, this, and then, okay, yeah, you're right. And then I said what I really wanted to say. And then the, the, the meeting ended on a, on a good note for me. Like I, it completely changed it, just that challenge that now you're talking bullshit, basically. And then I realized it, yes, that's true. And then I just say what I need to say and that's it. That was very powerful. Mm. Mm. And it took less than a minute. It wasn't a big deal. It can be very efficient. Mm -hmm. I really like what you brought up about how love has become known as the, 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 the caring. And, and it is, it is, but there's more. And a men's group is a, is a great place to redefine or, or, or add to what, what, what the definition of yeah. love can be. And that man in that moment, I think it, he was very caring, you know, because he's not doing it just because he's annoyed with me, you know, although he probably was annoyed and sometimes it's healthy to be annoyed. We should take that seriously. Why are we annoyed? But I think it was also coming from the, the genuine wish that I would be my best, that I'm not holding back or deluding myself or, you know, and, and also, if one man, even just one man, is, is kind of talking bullshit, it will have a certain impact on the group. It will lead, be much more, le much more likely that other people will talk bullshit too. So it's a communal responsibility to, to, to not allow that shit. And, and, and that's something the men's group, when it's really at working at its best, there, there will be very little bullshit and it will be very efficient. And, and so that's, and then that can be used in, in many different ways also in relationship to women, for example. Because I think that might be provocative, but I think sometimes women, they get lost in their emotions and they actually 
deep down, if a woman respects herself, she wants a man to set some boundaries. Because that's care and love. That's not, not about any abuse. It's, if that is done in an environment of respect, that is uh, very beautiful. When a man can set some boundaries, so uh, when a woman gets completely lost in emotions. That is something that can create connection and safety. You know, like it's like I care and I see what's happening and you know and we are yeah, I don't know what I was gonna say. Okay. That's okay. So how can we be good men? How can we try as men? How can we give the most in our relationships? I think in order to do that, we have to explore the extremes. Only a person who has explored the extremes can be a balanced person and a sane and healthy person. Because the person who has not explored their extremes will be afraid of the extremes and choose so-called balance out of fear. A person who has explored the extremes can be balanced. So, for example, if some violent impulses come up through sex, then by all means, explore it. Not in a way that is destructive, but in a way that is uh, a little bit scary, a little bit playful, and so on. But by all means, the extremes have to be explored. O otherwise, there is so much energy kept being afraid of things. And uh, and the more less we are afraid, the more naturally we can navigate each moment, and we have a, a, a much broader range to pl to to choose from. Oh, in this situation, maybe I need a little bit of this and a little bit of this because it is known. But if we don't know the full palette, we cannot use it. So I, I and obviously then to make mistakes is very important. Making new mistakes rather than the old mistake again and again. So uh, mistakes, willingness to make mistakes. It should be celebrated and I, and I if there is a relationship and one part doesn't acknowledge or, or appreciate the willingness of the other part to make some new mistakes once in a while then maybe it's, a, it's worthwhile to consider what's going on here can there be any growth if, if, if it's like that yeah and that brings up for me commitment um, let me just hit it backwards. Yeah. That brings up for me commitment because in friendships and in relationships and even with family, there is a fear that if you fuck up, they will leave you. These things happen. People people break apart. And that can happen in a men's group, but a priori the the agreement is to be committed and to not leave. So even if things get really difficult you don't have to be afraid that the other person is going to leave you once you have established this commitment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that the commitment is important. Um, if there are people coming and going, and it can be hard to really get traction, like to really get momentum. And uh, yeah, the commitment, like the, the knowing that, you know, you can handle it. It's, po it's okay to bring whatever you want to bring because the group can handle it that's uh, actually there's like um, you know if something very extreme can be expressed usually it might be a sign that hey there is some deep level of commitment here that that encourages us to go deeper so and, and that's very different from abuse Ab abuse sometimes may, may you know all us too like something very intense might be expressed in a very committed relationship uh, or something th this, this distorted expression may be expressed as abuse and it may look similar but it's important to understand the difference and see when when is something coming because there is a deep connection and commitment and when is it coming because the person is completely disconnected from himself and it may look similar but it's very different Do you think your relationship is going better because you are active in men's groups. Absolutely. And uh, for sure my, my wife uh, sometimes even pushes me. Now you have to go to the men's group. She knows if I've been away from men's groups for a while, she will know. She will see the difference and she will remind me. Now you have to go to the men's group. So that's, that's completely 
surgeon. Yeah. But what is then for her the difference between Andreas who does men's work and Andreas who wouldn't? I, I think I'm more passionate, more direct, um, just much more alive. And, and then there are also things that are more, most suited for me to de- work out with other men. Not with my wife. So, so um, if I primarily process things, my own emotions and so on, with my wife, then that's not the most healthy way. If I can do that with other men, then I can approach my wife from a completely different point of point in myself. But the, so those are the emotions that are already there even without the relationship. Isn't it not also true that difficulties in the relationship with your wife can get processed in the men's group and therefore when you're then back at home with your wife you can be you can be less um, reactive. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, often what is needed in from my experience if there is an interpersonal conflict or difficulties whether it's with my wife or someone else then if I can um, talk about it and express it in a, in a safe environment then already uh, there will be clarity there will be uh, new solutions coming so so but but when I'm in the middle of it I'm, it may not be fruitful to talk to my wife about it because I don't yet have the clarity so I have to go somewhere else and express myself and then I can approach her with clarity and we will, it will be fine. Yeah, I mean, the other men are independent, they're not involved with mm. in the conflict, so they can look at it with fresh, fresh eyes. Yeah. For many of us, there might be a, a tendency to think that when something is, go, is, is difficult in a man-woman relationship, that now this is the time to go deeper into it and to really figure this out and oh, we have to take it very seriously, but maybe that's the right time to step back and talk about it with someone who is not involved in the situation, get some fresh perspectives and then come back with the clarity to solve it. Or this it's, it's already being dissolved by speaking about it. It's not usually, I don't find it's necessary to solve anything. It gets dissolved when whatever tension is there is expressed. So... And that's not always, when the tension is really strong, that's not always the right moment to talk with my partner, with my wife. Because that could just make things more stuck. Um, so that's a good moment to go to the men's group, I express myself, and, and then basically dissolve the problem. Come back and with fresh eyes. Right, so you have an, an argument with your partner, you th- it feels like a very big deal. That evening you have a men's group, you walk into the room, guys, I have a big deal. Then you talk about it and you get feedback and you express your feelings. And then kind of the big deal is not so much a big deal anymore. Yeah. And then you can go home and it's like, well, okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. More about this? Yeah, that, that's also, I mean, that whole understanding is very central because some groups, they might try to fix, they might try to figure things out. But a different understanding is that by ex- by being willing to sit in the shit and express it, it it will dissolve itself. It it will change. So so it's not really um, the solution. Uh, is comes when we dare to, to to face what is actually there. Not not by trying to, to fix it while disconnecting from what is happening. Can it be good to even push someone deeper in the shit? In the, yeah, I sometimes it can, in, in a group, for example, yeah, absolutely. How? Oh. It could be something like, I, I hear you say that this is not such a big deal, but like when I look at your, your face, when I, when I, when I uh, it, it seems to be some, something else seems to be more true for you. It seems like this is a big deal. Otherwise, why are you even saying it's not a big deal? Why are you even talking about it if it's not a big deal? So, so just to, to have like the clear, direct feedback can, uh, can be very useful and um, 
respectful. Someone who's in denial, for example. Yeah, if someone is in denial. Uh, in everyday life, uh, it's probably really okay to let people be in denial. But if we cannot confront that in a men's group, then uh, where else? Has it happened that you can't stand someone in a group? Yeah, it has happened. And uh, in one of the men's groups that I was in, there was several rounds of conflict. Like several, mo most, most of the people had probably been involved in one conflict at some time and some point and, uh, and it created a deeper connection. Being willing to, to explore it and, and see what's really happening here. And, and I think that the, the con dealing with the conflict is less challenging and less takes less energy than, than just letting it simmer and, and not dealing with it. That's going to take much more energy and, and uh, dealing with it creates connection, not dealing with it uh, that then pe everyone is left with the judgments by themselves. Like just keeping judgments internally and disconnecting from the person. When, um, uh, even expressing judgments can be a way of connection. Uh, I mean, of connecting in the, through expressing what's actually there. Like sometimes, maybe that's what is there so intensely that unless we can express the judgment, there is no way to access anything else because that's all that is there in that moment. Uh, so, expressing judgments can be very healthy and very loving when it's done with a level of responsibility and, and self awareness. Uh, and there might also be some truth in it, in those judgments. There can be something, maybe there is genuinely something for the other person to learn as well. So I think I would say that in many ways, it's both parties will have something to learn. It's very rarely that it's only one person. If there is two parties involved, then usually both parties have some part in it. Um, and uh, so even, even the, in the judgments, there can maybe be some, some truth. If it hurts, it, there might be some truth in it, or but it or it or it may just be hurting because it reminds uh, me of something that happened in my childhood, for example. So it may not necessarily be true, but it like if someone expresses certain judgments towards me, it may not be that that is true, but it could be, and then that's that's a, that would be good to look at. But it could also be that it's it's reminding me of something in the past, and if if in the present I can see that whoa. Actually, right now the situation is different. This person actually doesn't like really hate me or doesn't really want to put me down or I am capable of handling the situation. I am in a different place now than I was then. Then that can be a way rather than re-traumatizing, it can be a way of, of healing the wound. That simmering that you talked about, that's what happens in a lot of the rest of society. Yeah. yeah. Especially in Canada, I think. I mean, I I uh, have had neighbors who there's you know there's tension, but we don't we don't get we don't start yelling at each other. That's not what you do in this part of the world. Hmm. Uh, but maybe that would be good if that would be done in a safe way, like it is done in a men's group. It's a, it's a kind of tricky question because if other people, like the other person, doesn't have this kind of background, it. I think it has to be assessed in each case, you know, whether it's fruitful or not to go into that kind of dialogue. But but to never go, but, but to never try it, just in fear of it getting messy, then that's not there. Then there is very little choice and freedom. So I think once in a while it's 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 good to try it, even if it is, even if it could get messy. If it is already messy, it will just be a different kind of mess. Maybe that's okay for a change. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The men's group as a way to uncharge. Yeah. To be free. And yeah. And generating more more choice and freedom. Like that, that there is by exploring extremes and by exploring different ways of dealing with things, there there is a much broader repertoire to draw upon when when things happen. Yeah. Anything about this mythology that resonates with you? I'm not that interested in mythology. Um, and perhaps it is 
and it's like a, a form that there's become a tradition of being attached to that form in, in the men's movement, perhaps. And while it may be useful, uh, I don't have a strong attachment to it. Um, I think that in my own life, by being honest to myself, I know what I want. I don't have to read any fairy tale or any mythology to know what I want. And if I'm a man and there is certain qualities that are inherent in being a man, then I don't need to look for it outside myself. So I, I don't really need that stuff. There must have been some story that really touched you. The, um, I mean, we have very many nice fairy tales in Norway, and it's um, it's often about superpowers and uh, and uh, killing the trolls and and uh, and uh, opposing some idiots or something like that. <laughs> it's very refreshing. <laughs> I guess it is important to have some role models in relation to going one's own path and, and not following the crowd or um, going into the unknown. I think it, it's, it's valuable to have some modeling of that, whether it's through a fairy tale or through a person or... Uh, but but it's, it's not about making someone or something into an idol or it, it's about pointing to a quality within oneself. I think that has to be the focus, otherwise it can be a distraction. Is there a book that you really like? Something about manhood you see in there? Or forget manhood, just about being on trails. Well, I think that some of the books by Osho is very are very um, fresh and uh, rejuvenating in in the in the kind of the rebellion in it that it's it's even not about me agreeing or disagreeing because it's kind of pointing to something deeper than than the whole game of agreeing and disagreeing or maybe I should do this or maybe I should that. It's about the intensity and totality and. Um, Willingness to try something new and and um, so it's more about creating or pointing towards a certain dynamic rather than an external form, because who knows what will come out of it? Like if I'm being honest to myself and being passionate, who knows what will happen? But in, in itself, it has value if I can be passionate. So any book that can kind of shine that light or, or, or bring that spark of, of aliveness and, and being honest with oneself, I think that's, that's great. Now you are my guest here this uh, weekend and uh, I've seen you interact with my cat. Hmm. And it, it seems that you, you like cats. Yeah, I think cats are very beautiful and uh, playful they are and they are individualistic. Uh, um, and um, yeah, very very fascinating. Isn't it true that there's something masculine about dogs and something feminine about cats? Um, maybe cats are quite feminine, very unpredictable, <laughs> very kind of flowing. And, and uh, that might very well be true, and but like the feminine and masculine is lives in in I guess in all of life basically all of life exists within polarity, so I, I, even in in men and women we both have we all have the masculine and the feminine in to varying degrees and 
um, there can also be definitely be room for a lot of softness in a manuscript, like being just feeling sad or or just being like very sensitive and and uh, like yeah, vulnerable and. and But no, I, I, saying vulnerable is not right because because vulnerable is not about any particular expression. You know, vulnerability is about being transparent to what's happening. That could, what is happening could be anger, or it could be being very sensitive. It could be joy. So vulnerability and softness is not is not the same. But sadness and sensitivity is not masculine. Probably can be. Um, I, I guess as as men, oh, some people some some people say like if you have a cock, you are you are masculine. <laughs> this again is a is a is a controversial statement uh, nowadays because because um, you know just. On the one hand, we all have masculine and feminine inside us, but but if we say that you know your genitals have nothing to do with it, maybe that's taking it a bit too far. Um, but um, yeah, I mean maybe maybe you know even a men's group, it's not it's not about really providing definite answer. It's about having an experience, and, and is it masculine or feminine to cry or maybe it's just human maybe it's not really important what, what we call it